What do you think is the number one way that most retail traders define success in their trading? While most might say profits, I think that the real answer for most people is winning percentage. Hi, I'm Doc for Ready, Set, Crypto with your one-minute market report for Thursday, June 13th. A high winning percentage appeals to everyone because it's a metric that everyone understands, just like a high batting average in baseball. We're used to being measured in percentage of success, whether it's your credit score, your grade point average, or even your social credit score in China. A high score based on these metrics always gives one a feeling of pride and confidence. But in trading, a high win rate might be the worst thing that you can shoot for. I realize that this is counterintuitive, but if you stick around the profession of trading long enough, you'll find that most things about it are unnatural. So why is shooting for a high win percentage a bad thing? Look, there's nothing wrong with having a high win rate, but trying to attain a high winning percentage will likely harm your profitability and your account balance. This is because there's a temptation to go for the easy wins, those low hanging fruit trades where you can just grab a couple of sats and notch a win in your belt. But if you're going for those quick, small wins that drive up your winning percentage, there's no doubt that your losers, when they do occur, will be much larger than any winning trade and will erase those profits in one stroke. The way that most people go for a high win percentage is to take those small profits when they're available and drive up their win numbers. But the losses will always be larger in that scenario, even if they're infrequent. In trading, we call this eating like a bird and crapping like an elephant. It's what every retail trader does. It feels natural to go for that high winning rate but it will absolutely work against your ability to accumulate profits. So what should you do? It might surprise you that professional traders are doing the exact opposite of this retail approach. They're using a concept called asymmetric risk reward. A professional investor will define a small amount of risk in order to make a disproportionately larger reward. Conversely, retail investors use asymmetric risk reward. However, they're doing it in the opposite manner. They're defining a large amount of risk to make a disproportionately smaller reward. And that's all in the name of racking up a high win percentage. But one group makes a lot of money and the other overwhelmingly loses money over time. Let's study the professional approach a little bit and see how this works. Is it simply a matter of defining a small stop loss and blowing out your profit target to five or six times the stop amount? Well, yes and no. Creating the asymmetric risk reward structure is important, but it's also how to set up your trade so that you're creating the opportunity for a big win. That's perhaps even more important. There are several ways that I can illustrate this, but perhaps the clearest way to prove this is through the Hero gaming site, where people are betting on whether Bitcoin will either rise or fall over the course of the next five minutes. Think about it. The probability of win or loss in this case is nearly 50%. It's a coin flip as to whether the price will be higher or lower in the next five minutes. And for those of you that think you can slap some oscillators on your chart to increase your win rate, I can prove to you that the win rate has nothing to do with your ability to create profits on this site. The asymmetric risk and reward is created in Hero when you're going against the grain of everyone else. In this particular, they call this a card, you can see that 518 traders thought that the price would go higher and only 278 thought that it would go lower, nearly two to one to the bullish side. So the payoff is about double for those that win if the price ends up going lower in the next five minutes. This is usually because there's a short-term rally in place, but in this case, the wrecked or bearish side won the card by a significant margin and their reward was double the risk. Does a high winning percentage pay off? Let's look at the hero leaderboard and loser boards. Here's the leaderboard. Note that most have about a 50% win rate. 
with the leader actually losing more than half the time. And now compare that against the top 10 losers on the loser board. For the most part, are winning a higher percentage of games than their winning counterparts on the leaderboard. Can you now see that trade selection has a huge impact towards creating these asymmetric rewards? In this case, the leaders are waiting for the right setups, while the losers are just trying to score wins in any way that they can, even if those wins pay out very little. And this latter setup is what most of us do. Now, you might be saying, oh, that's Hero, that's just a scam site. I have no interest in that. Show me something that applies to real trading. Okay, fair enough. I'll show you a setup that I use to create maximum asymmetry through the setup. It's what I call a trap entry for reasons that will be obvious in, in a minute. And it fits nicely into my fractal energy trading system. In this chart, we have three different time frames. We have the daily over here. We have a one hour chart and we have a 12 minute for different purposes. So let's say that Bitcoin is in a longer time frame uptrend on the daily chart, which it is. During that uptrend, we're gonna see pullbacks all the time. We're gonna see pullbacks all the time, which are gonna show up as actual trends on the smaller time frame charts with lower highs and lower lows. Now, the longer that a pullback goes, which goes against the main trend, the more emboldened that the bears are gonna get. And they're gonna reach a point too far into the pullback where they can't wait any longer. They feel like they're gonna miss the move unless they get on board. And guess what? They've already missed the move. Don't forget, the longer trend is still to the upside, so that acts as a parent time frame. So at some point through every pullback, we normally see the trend revert back up to the main direction again. So what I normally look for, and in this case, I'll use the 12 minute chart on the right hand side, is the price is showing a series of lower highs and lower lows. And what I'm gonna look for is I'm gonna look for a higher low. So all of these are lower lows, and what I'm gonna look for is a higher low and then a subsequent higher high. So the bears that got in too late, and to me this is way too late to get into a trend, will be forced to cover and to buy back their positions, and that adds to the accumulation. And the, the price move can be very sharp when you have too many people on the wrong side of the trade that have to cover. So in a case like this, with an entry here, I can set my risk at just underneath the recent lows. In other words, if it does pull in a lower high and roll over again, okay, so that's, that's my stop loss, but I can set a target that as many times this risk element to the downside as an upside target. So even if I win 50% of the time and have a target that's usually several multiples, several R multiples of the risk, this fits the definition of asymmetric risk and reward. Why don't more retail traders take trade setups like this? Well, there's several reasons. First, it takes some skill to identify when an intermediate counter trend is about to revert to the main trend. Second, these trades never feel very good to enter because you're going against the crowd. Lastly, it can be fatiguing to hold in there against every voice in your head to take quick profits off the table before it reverses and gives back your paper profit. So hanging into a deep target can sometimes be a little bit taxing. One of the old maxims in trading is you'll never go broke taking a profit. However, they couldn't be more wrong. The key to profits in long-term success in this business is to do what others either cannot or will not do. And part of that is to seek asymmetry in your trade setups. What do you see in your own trading? Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one minute market here at Ready, Set, Crypto.